I thought we would talk about the Lonnie Zamora case, which happened in Socorro, New Mexico. And on April 24th in 1964 at about 5.45 p.m. Mountain Time. Now we're going back to the 20, 60s. 20, yeah, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, 1964. And Lonnie Zamora is a Socorro, New Mexico police officer. And uh, while he was on patrol, he observed a black vehicle speeding past the courthouse. So he called it in and went in pursuit of the vehicle. And the vehicle was about three blocks ahead of him at this point. When he chased the vehicle, he, he went. they went to the outskirts of town. Right. The, the vehicle was driving towards the rodeo grounds. Oh, you mean the actual rodeo? rodeo. Oh, okay. Yes, where they have their rodeos. Oh, yeah, because they're in New Mexico. That's right. Right. As he reached the outskirts of town, he heard a loud roar sound. And he saw a flame in the distance. And he thought at first, and it was about a mile ahead of him, he thought at first that it was a dynamite shack that was in the area had exploded. Oh, yeah, because of the mines, yeah. yeah. Right. They had, right. So they had right, right, right. dynamite stored in these shacks. Right. He didn't know, he didn't remember exactly where the shack was, so he thought maybe that's what this loud sound and this flame that he saw was. Right. Instead of chasing this vehicle any further, he wanted to go and see, you What's know, if, if somebody got hurt from right, this right, explosion. Right, right. So when he first especially, arrived, especially in those small towns where there's nothing happening besides car speeding, right? You know, it could have been some kids <laughs> playing with the, you know, the, you know, with yeah, this yeah, and dynamite. lit it up yeah. and and got hurt or something. So he decided to abandon the chase and and, and go, investigate, go investigate, right, yeah. right. So when he got there, he described a bluish white flame with an orange tint to it. That's a very strange color, right? An orange. Hold so on. it was a bluish white flame okay. with an orange tint. He said the flame was funnel shaped. That funnel shape. Where, where, yeah. He said that it was narrower on the top and wider on the bottom. But okay. he said it wasn't. It wasn't like a yeah, wide, like fanning. He was. Just, yeah, it was very narrow. Uh, field of 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 right this conical shape. He said he couldn't determine how, you know, the size of the flame, mm -hmm. because he was too busy driving and he didn't, you know, he had to keep his eye on the road. It wasn't sunset, but the sun was, you know, low on the horizon. Right, right, so. And he said he was wearing, at the time, he was wearing like green tinted sunglasses. Right. So he said that the that the flame was slowly descending in an isolated area that was about a mile south of Socorro, New Mexico. He said he couldn't see anything above the flame and he couldn't see the bottom of the flame because the bottom of the flame was behind a hill. He said that it was descending behind this hill mm -hmm. and he could see dust coming up. But oh, it was descending. It was descending, right, the right. flame was coming down but he could see he couldn't see what was above the flame right because but yeah, but right. he could see the flame and he couldn't see the bottom of the flame because it, it was it had, behind it a had, hill he, yeah. it was going behind a hill he said however he could see dust coming up right or it could have been if it was an actual flame right. as it came down it was you know creating a, yeah creating a vortex a... and 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 you know so he drove up a a gravel road to get a closer look at the flame and he said that the that the roar was very loud but it didn't sound like a jet it was totally different and then he said that the that the sound changed in frequency from a high sound high pitch sound to a lower pitch sound wow and then it just stopped that but he but he yeah. was driving and didn't see what happened to change that sound but when it stopped um he was he was in the process of trying to get up this very steep uh gravel hill right and he said when he drove up he kept sliding backwards so it took him about three attempts oh, because of the 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 the, 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 the incline, yeah. the incline of, the, yeah. of the hill and because it was covered in gravel right so he said it took him about three attempts to get to get on top up so when he finally got to the top of the hill, that's when the noise stopped. He said when he reached the top 
of this uh, hill. Mm -hmm. um, he he kept driving slowly forward, and he was looking for the dynamite shack. Right. He couldn't remember exactly yeah. where it was, so he was like looking around. Then he saw the object, and at first he thought it was an overturned vehicle. Right. You know, like a Volkswagen bus or something like that. Right. But he said it was about 20 feet long, whatever this Straight object on. was. And um, and then he noticed two people, two short people wearing white coveralls. And he said they were either short adults or tall children. So he said as yeah. he was driving forward and he saw this object and he saw the people, one of them turned and looked his direction. And he thought they were looking at either him or his vehicle. Right. And that that individual who was looking at him, as soon as he saw him, mm -hmm. kind of jumped, like was startled. He was looking at the object and he saw two legs, extensions, sticking out of the object, going out, slanting outwards yeah, towards the ground. That's the one. He made a sketch also. There's online. Right, think. right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, the object was supported by these two Legs, legs, it looked yeah. like. So he moved his coast, his his vehicle closer, mm -hmm. because he thought at this point it was an accident of some sort, like some vehicle flipped over, right. and and maybe these people needed help. Right, right. Well, you know, it's, maybe it's they were injured. Is like being a first responder. Maybe they were right. exactly. Yeah. He, his uh, police instincts yeah. kicked in. So he radioed to the sheriff's office. And he said he'd be 10-6 out of the vehicle, which means he's getting out of the vehicle to uh, investigate, investigate. Uh, a, uh, a possible accident right. down, in, down in the Arroyo. So he got out of his car, and when he did, he fell <laughs> because of the gravel. He fell down. And then as he fell, he heard two or three loud thumps that he, that he described like either hammering sounds or like someone slamming a door really hard. Oh. So he heard two or three. He can't recall exactly how many of these sounds he heard. And then when he heard those sounds, he turned and looked at the object. Because when he fell, he, he wasn't looking at the right, object. Right, right. He was looking down at the ground. And then he heard another loud roar. And since he was much closer to the object now, because he had gone slightly down this hill. Right. He was closer to the object at this point. And because this sound was so loud and he had seen this flame before, mm -hmm. the frequency was rising. He thought this thing might explode. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he, he thought know this thing is. might be ex getting ready to explode. Right. So he jumped down and hid behind a hill. <laughs> Has to be funny. <laughs> because, right, well, yeah, you know, you he thought know. this thing might explode. Right. When the sound stopped, he heard this whining sound, and then it kept getting higher in frequency, the sound. Wow. And then the object started lifting off so the like ground. So like a turbine. It sounded like a turbine or something. The object started, right. Yeah. It, it started lifting off the ground until it was about the height of where his vehicle was on the hill. On the hill. Which is above him. Right, right. You know, about 20, 25 feet off the ground. And then he said the object became silent and then it started moving southwest. Hmm. And then the object, the, the color of it was a dull aluminum and it was shaped like a propane tank, he said. Mm -hmm. Or a Tic Tac, about 20 <laughs> feet long with uh, <laughs> some type of red lettering it was about two and a half feet tall and about two feet wide. Also, there was inscription on it? There was an inscription on the side of, of the object. So that was his original drawing. But there's speculation over whether this was the actual insignia that he saw. Because oh. it's, it, was, it was said... And I don't know if it was by the FBI or the Air Force or Dr. J. Allen Hynek or whoever it was, mm -hmm. but they said you should not draw the actual symbol. You should draw something else so that if someone else reports this, 
and they draw this symbol, we know it's phony. Which is pretty it's clever. Pretty smart, but it's, it's also, actually pretty clever. So, yeah, it's, so it's we don't know if this was the actual yeah the, the uh, shape that shape. he he drew. Um, the the one that they say was the actual shape was an inverted V with three um, horizontal lines going through it. Hmm. And oh. then and then in a letter that um, Dr. J. Allen Hynek wrote years later, he drew an inverted V with two horizontal lines in the V and one above it. Oh, so we don't knows? know which yeah. is the real one. Yeah, so this object, when it took off, it flew towards, ironically, flew towards the um, dynamite shack and only cleared it by about three feet. Yes. The so the object lifted up right. and flew towards the dynamite shack, which was in the distance. Right, right, right. And the dynamite shack is eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. And he said that it looked like it was only three feet above the dynamite shack when it passed over the top of it. So then it flew off um, into the distance. And then that's when he reported it. Um, over the radio before anybody else showed up he made that drawing the, the, that, you're right. that, that shows the insignia on the side of the, uh, the aircraft um, a New York I, I'm sorry a New Mexico state police sergeant and the Socorro County under sheriff responded to the scene when he, he made the call over the radio and when they arrived, they noticed a scorched circular area about 30 to 40 feet in diameter on the ground. There were, there were also four V-shaped indentations in the soil, 8 inches by 12 inches across and about 3 to 4 inches deep, spaced out in a rectangular formation. So first, you had the um, New Mexico State Police Sergeant show up with the Socorro County Under Sheriff. Mm -hmm. They witnessed, you know, this large circle on the ground and these impressions. And they said that the edges of the impressions had dirt pushed away. Oh, like a, right, like a like, small like, blast. Like, like, yeah, yeah. You know, not a blast. No, no, I mean, like, just at like angle. Because they were on an angle, right. when they touched oh. down, they, they pushed the dirt sideways on gotcha. the outer edge. And that there were also two circular imprints in the ground that were about three and a half inches in diameter and about a half an inch deep one other observation that's not in the report is that there were footprints at the site footprints oh right he reported footprints so he claims that there were footprints left on the ground but you won't find that in the other no, well, reports that I've seen, possibly in the Blue Book files. But yeah. um, the Air Force uh, was contacted mm -hmm. and um, because they thought maybe this was some experimental aircraft. Right, right. You know, like that we've seen before. Yeah. Right, because, you know, not far away, you have military bases and right. things like that. So, so ironically, though, Somehow the FBI found out about it. And not that long after. And it's not their um, jurisdiction, jurisdiction right? to investigate UFO sightings. Right. That's not what they do. So the FBI agent was there to take Lonnie Zamora's uh, testimony yeah. and uh, whatever you know information the, the Air Force would share with them. The Air Force took photographs of the impressions in the ground. Mm -hmm. They took measurements of the site. Right. And um, uh, samples of the vegetation that was... Uh, right, because... There was burning ve vegetation when they arrived. There were three bushes or plants that were smoldering, that were inside this circle. Right. And there was one outside that was also smoldering. Wow. Wow. So there is a, obviously some uh, some type of something. Yeah. So they took samples of these things, and the burnt bushes were analyzed for propellant residue, 
and the test came back inconclusive. They couldn't figure out what had was. what oh, had yeah. caused this burning of these plants. So, Dr. Jalen Hynek, mm-hmm. the consultant for Project Blue Book, was sent out to also speak with um, Lani Zamora and to also evaluate, you know, his evaluation of the evidence right. of of what was there. They thought at first that this could be a prototype for the lunar lander right that's why we had talked about that right they thought that this was a prototype for the lunar lander so they looked into where that there was only one of them one prototype and that prototype was in southern california at the time really yeah on that day on doing tests in Southern California, you know, you Jalen Hynek was um, he was perplexed by this. You know, this was one of the cases that really puzzled him. Right. You know, because he didn't have a plausible explanation other than possibly the, the lunar lander and that cop. You know, and uh, yeah. he was a very reputable uh, police officer and very believable, and he wouldn't talk to anyone until he spoke to his minister. He was a very religious man. Jacques Vallée, who we Jacques spoke Vallée. about before, mm-hmm. um, you know, he told uh, Dr. Jalen Hynek um, about cases in France where there had been, you know, landing sites right. that they believed were authentic of some sort, whether they were experimental aircraft or whatever they might be, but there, there were sites... I in France, sh- so it wasn't until this particular case when they start looking into it that when Dr. Jalen Hynek investigated this case, that he started thinking maybe there's something to the UFO phenomenon that's outside of a natural explanation, right? An earthly explanation. This was the one case that kind of pushed him over the edge. Talking about Project Blue Book, they. The director at the time was uh, Major Hector Quintanella. He took an interest in this case because it was one of the best cases they'd ever had with the most evidence. Right. You know, that they could um, scientifically test. Like I said, they they tested these burnt bushes. They took their measurements. Uh, they, They were able to try to determine the weight of whatever this was based on the size of the the impressions on the ground right. and how deep they how were. Deep they were yeah. Right. So they could kind of, and that it was four impressions, they could kind of guesstimate the, the, the weight of this object. Weight, yeah. Right. And and exactly the scale of it as well. He, he took an interest in the case and he tried to figure out what this was, you know, right. because they all thought it was some type of military aircraft of some sort. Which it sounds like it is. I mean, which it sounded like. Yeah, it could be. Could be. Right. He checked with NASA. Nothing. You know, the lander was in California at the time. Not that liquid. liquid they, that they anything. didn't. They didn't have anything. Um, yes, like you, like we, the skiff, sensitive compartmented information. information. So if you're not in that program, you don't know about it. Yeah. So it's possible that there was some. Uh, government program that that he wasn't privy to, right? But he investigated it all the way up to the White House. He said, and he said, "I want to know what this thing is." Mm-hmm. And he never, they never, replied. they never found out what it was. But as we said before, if it's a sensitive program, there's no way. If you're, you're not know. working in it, you're not going to know about it. Oh, very interesting. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Yeah, thank you for uh, well, thank you to you for all the information you brought again. Well, I try to do my best. I, yeah. and like we said before, we're not experts by any means. By any means, and we're just only providing information that uh, bring conversations. Right, um, right. So if you have any information or know someone or know someone about the cases we spoke about or any other cases, or maybe you have some personal experience, documents, photos. Right. Also, let us know. Let us know. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button at the bottom. And that little bell if you want notifications. Thanks again for a a good conversation. And we'll see you next time inside the skiff.